Aloha. It's September the 2nd. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. That can mean only one thing. It's Trump week. I'm Tim Apicella, your host. And with us this week is Stephanie Dalton, Jay Fidel, and Winston Welch. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, uh, thank you, Tim. Well, you know, the title of the show is uh, Wisconsin's Governor to Trump, Don't Come Here. You know, if you really think about it, Donald Trump, uh, since the uh, RNC has taken a page right out of Richard Nixon's playbook, I'm the law and order president. I mean, it's almost page for page, word for word, um, you know, that he's, he's the defender of suburbia. He's the defender of um, housewives in suburbia. And it's the Democratic Party, specifically Joe Biden, that is um, permissive of um, anarchist thugs and agitators. And Donald Trump did a fairly successful job on Friday night, when he, uh, the last night of the um, RNC. And a lot of people were concerned that Joe Biden you know, has to respond to it. Uh, but the bottom line is, Richard Nixon back in the day was quite successful in 1968 to paint the Johnson administration as permissive because we had rioting in the streets, we had college campuses, you know, uh, rocks being thrown, and uh, it was a horrible time for America. And the only difference was that it's true that um, President Johnson was responsible for a lot of the violence that was taking place. Uh, this time around, Donald Trump is using the same tactic, but he's the president of the United States. And I find that glaringly odd that he's uh, pulling that page out of Nixon's playbook, but it's his administration that's causing this problem, uh, particularly being um, non-attentive to some of the racial t tensions and difficulties and uh, not a paying attention to some of the abuses in the police department and all the things that are sparking this, this unrest. And Donald Trump is mute to that, but he, uh, he's the defender of of suburbia and certainly against rioting and looting and all the things that the boogeyman is coming to get you for uh, it down the road here. So Jay, to you, what do you think about Donald Trump's strategy of painting Joe Biden as uh, permissive and the radical socialist that's gonna allow uh, suburbia to go to hell in a handbasket, yet it's under his administration that is causing this? Reminds me of one of my early cases in the practice of law. <clears throat> the other guy um, made a really flimsy ridiculous argument. And the judge said, you know, that's a ridiculous argument. And then the, the lawyer said, yeah, judge, but that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I think that's the answer that everyone in America should hear. I think that's the perfect answer. Uh, the story of yours is exactly what America needs to hear because that's all he has. Well, you know, uh, you talked about it last time, but he has no platform. It's what he had for breakfast, how many hamburgers. And, um, you know, he, he just makes it up every day, every hour. Um, and this is, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the thrill of the moment. Um, and so um, I think if you look carefully, I don't know if Fox News looks carefully. I don't think they do. Um, but if we look carefully, we see that he's fomenting the violence. It's not only that it's happening, he's making it happen. That makes it worse. Not only is he a sitting president who could stop it, but he's a sitting president who foments it. But the dog whistles and all these encouragements to, you know, the people who do it or would do it. I mean, it's outrageous, Tim. And I, I just can't understand why anybody would support him. And yet they do. Well, after almost four years now, I'm convinced that Donald Trump, you know, puts on his bunny slippers and you know, puts a hamburger aside on the side table and sits in his chair and watches Fox and takes direction from Tucker Carlson and Hannity and, 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 the, and the like. And one of the things, if you notice on Fox News, is that Tucker Carlson was propping up the 17-year-old shooter with his um, AR-15, um, Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, so Donald Trump didn't prop him up, but he certainly didn't condemn him. And I find that really unsettling that he refused to condemn him. And not only did uh, Donald Trump refuse to do it, but his uh, chief of staff um, on the news on Sunday did the same thing. He refused to actually condemn this an individual that came across state lines and um, brought in his AR-15 right on the open streets, walked right past policemen and killed two people and wounded one. And did Donald Trump have any words against him? Not one. Did Donald Trump have any words against the uh, 
the Patriot Prayer Group that um, came, you know, riding in on their posse down the streets and shooting protesters with paintballs and spraying them with paint. No, Donald Trump didn't condemn them. He said, well, you know, paint, paint is a defensive tactic. They're not bullets. Are you kidding me? I mean, Donald Trump said, go ahead, agitate. Go ahead, shoot the crowd up with paintballs. Um, that makes us look stronger and better. I, I, I can't believe this president, well, I can believe it, but this president has, you're right, Jay, has taken the tack that I want to promote the violence so I could be the savior to stop the violence. And tell that to all the suburban housewives in America that I and only I can fix this. And that's what he does. That's what he's trying to do. Well, it's tragic, tragic, Tim, that a guy without a platform, only shiny objects, only this really bizarre thing about pasting every problem on his, in his adversary's opponent uh, and in creating problems and then pasting them on uh, his opponent. He stands a fair chance at winning. Michael Moore, you know, predicted a few days ago. I mean, a lot of people think Michael Moore is over the side himself, but um, Michael Moore predicted a few days ago that Trump was going to win. Now, I'm not saying because he said that it, it really means a lot, but um, it, it's, a, it's a seductive possibility that he will win. He will monkey up the post office. He will suppress voters. He will confuse housewives all over suburban America and other things we don't know about yet. That's, he's looking for opportunities and maybe he'll win. And that's when I put my application in for permanent residence in Tasmania. <laughs> okay, Stephanie. Um, not listening to the Michael Moore interview, but um, feeling fairly dejected, fairly depressed after Donald Trump, I thought, did a fairly effective job of trying to paint Joe Biden as a permissive Democrat that, you know, is representative of the thugs and the anarchists and uh, the, the radical socialists. And I was going, where's Joe Biden? Where's Joe Biden in all this? Well, on Monday, Joe Biden came out and, and I think for 20 minutes did an outstanding job of trying to refute that which Donald Trump is trying to paint him in the corner in. And I uh, just was wanting to hear your thoughts about how well you thought Joe Biden did on Monday in that 20 minute speech. Well, I think it's such an important point that you make. I, I, I think he did come out and I liked the way he expressed himself. It, it wasn't shouting, screaming and rebutting. It was, this is what it is. And I, he did it again today, or at least, or maybe the tape I saw was old. And I think that um, he's making the point that now is being echoed through all the um, progressive networks that by the way, all this is going on under Donald Trump's administration. <laughs> the, Biden hasn't been in office for eight, 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 five, six years, five years, four years. And, and what, is, what is this is another one of those fantasy, disaster fantasies that he is playing with his race. And they for somehow, they somehow take that on, even though it's, it's not real. What's happening now is Trump's, not Biden's. Although, and I understand that one thing driving this, because I've talked to people, heard them reel on about, well, AOC. And I mentioned that she's a representative. What is it? Oh, yeah, but she's really dangerous. And now we have this crazy California person. So I uh, I do think um, you're, you were right on to call him out. He responded to it. You picked that up. I think we saw it. It was adequate as far as I was concerned. The echoing of it through the capillary system of the networks is really right. important. That is important. And I, I got to tell you, Joe Biden did what I thought he did very naturally. And the quote of the day for that 20 minutes uh, speech was, you know me. Do I look like a radical socialist <laughs> and soft and have a soft spot for rioters? Um, that's what needed to happen. He needed to take Donald Trump on almost word for word to um, refute the lies that Donald Trump is trying to paint him as. And I think I, that, that 20 minutes was, um, gave me a lot of hope again because I was getting very concerned. And, and I'm that's glad to through the network too, Tim, because they're also saying we know him from all of these years in office, not to mention his vice presidency. So we know a lot about him and it's ludicrous that he could be put, painted in that manner. Yeah. Hey, Winston, did you have a um, particular mo a Joe Biden moment in, uh, on Monday that you thought was a fairly effective way to refute Donald Trump? It's because it says top intelligence officials 
will not brief the house anymore. And I thought, oh, that's quite interesting, isn't it, on activities where we know that uh, Russians and other state agents will be involved in uh, manipulating or trying to manipulate the election. And so uh, CNN feed just kicked up and uh, reminded me of that. Um, you know, the thing about Joe Biden is that, you know, he, he's not exactly, he's, is he a radical socialist? No, he likes buying fine neckties and suits and, and, and eating in great restaurants. The man is not a radical socialist. What he is not emphatically is Donald Trump. That is his biggest selling point right now to the American people. But um, there was a, another great article in, um, I thought recently that was that came out in uh, Vox, which was, can anything change Americans' minds about Donald Trump? It came out on the second, which was is today. <laughs> okay, and it uh, seems like a long time ago and, and, and the, the scheme of things because so much happens. I don't think that I don't know, maybe just more chaos and anarchy. Will that will that just strengthen both sides and have people retreat? Or will those soccer moms indeed say, you know what, it is time for just a normal, nice guy. I don't care if he wants health care for everybody or not. Maybe Joe Biden's strategy needs to be that everybody who lives in a suburban zip code gets a white embossed Bible with a gun. I, I, I don't know, uh, to calm whatever fears that, that Donald Trump is able to play on. Well, I you know, he, I, he has that solid 42% that was mentioned in that article. I thought it was a great article, by the way. Um, but you know, you know that Tim, the, the 42%, I mean, the, the difference is shrinking. Yeah. You, you expect that you know, right after a convention and a convention, public and national convention was only a few days ago. You expect that. But, you know, I, I like to add something to this whole thing about how well Biden did. Fact is that here in Trump week, on a number of occasions, we said, where is he? Trump is hitting him left and right, you know, and he's not hitting back. Uh, why is he not hitting back? Well, I think you could, you could argue that he's not hitting back because it's this thing about go low and go high and, you know, we'll let Trump fall on his own sword and all that. I'm not sure that works in today's America. No, it doesn't. But to me, I think, and I like to ask you guys how you feel about this. I think every time Trump attacks Biden or lies, either way, maybe it's the same thing, um, that Biden should respond. It's not going to cost him anything because the press will come around and hear his respectful response. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to know that uh, Donald Trump has lied about the following things today. I just want to set the record straight every day. Well, and I think that's a perfect point. And that's what I said last week is you never leave a room when someone has lobbied a lie against you. And there's people in that room that may, may accept it as gospel truth. And uh, maybe that's my way of thinking. And I've always thought that way. But people say, well, you know, Tim, you really shouldn't lower yourself down to their level um, by addressing their, their slanderous, you know, libelous lies. And I said, no, because you, don't, you never know what someone's going to accept as the truth versus a lie. True. And, I, and Donald, I mean, excuse me, and Joe Biden, I think, did an effective do job on Monday. In fact, this particular point I want to bring out is he said, I want to save America, safe from COVID, safe from crime, and looking safe from, uh, from a, for a vaccine. And he said, I want to save, uh, save, uh, save from uh, bad cops. Let me be crystal clear. I want us to be safe for four more years of Donald Trump. So I think, I think you're right, Jay, is that for not maybe every lie that Donald Trump tells, because we know he has over 20,000 of them, but certainly the ones that are going to land a blow on, on, on Joe Biden's ability to garnish votes. So no, I and, he, and he doesn't have to lie to do this. He doesn't even have to raise his voice. All he's got to be is a, you know, a fair-minded commentator saying, I just want to be sure you understand that he lied. And that's like, I don't know if it's every day, every couple of days, maybe, but it shouldn't be once every two weeks. There isn't enough time. Well, well we're now at the point with MSNBC where immediately after Donald Trump is um, done with the podium, they bring on their fact checker immediately. And it's, I call him a kid. He looks like, he looks like about a 22 year old kid, but the kid looked like he's haggard. He's worn down. He, you know, he's, he looks disheveled because he can't keep up with Donald Trump's lies. Well, can I just mention that you may have seen it, but actually Joe Biden suggested and, and said it would be wonderful to have 
of that running commentary across the bottom of the screen when they both speak or when each speaks or if they happen to do the debate, which I hope maybe they don't do and take Nancy Pelosi's advice, but a, a running line across the bottom that, that reads out the fact checking as it is happening, as the speech is happening. Right, well, let's-, the, let's the, um... the commentators then discuss that as something that's been studied. And the conclusion was that actually nobody pays any attention to that, okay? Or not much with the, the finding was that they, there wasn't much attention paid to it. So I think that what it does is highlight this dilemma. It yeah. doesn't matter if he lies, okay? Well, that it does, it does matter. Yes, it, it matters in the big picture, but for the people that are gonna put him back in, that doesn't matter. And that's- Okay, but you know, we're, we're... Joe Biden and the Democratic Party are fighting for the hearts and souls of about 11% of the voting population. Mm -hmm. We know the Democrats who are in their silos, they're in their silos. We know the, the, you know, the Trump, the Trumpicans, that uh, the 42 to 44%, they're in their silos. We're fighting for the hearts and souls of about less than nine, 10%. And that's the target audience that everyone has to, you know, is, is vying for. So Winston, let me ask you this. Do you think it's a good idea that, um, uh, Joe Biden has suggested that he would debate Donald Trump only if there is a uh, fact checker on site. You know, it, it won't matter because anyone tuning in, it, it, we're already in our silos. You're right. It's that 11 percent that we're looking for. So what it is, is, is people need to look back. And that, that question that they always ask every four years, are you and your family and our nation better off than you were four years ago? I mean, that's just like the simple, basic one. And uh, uh, people might say, well, COVID aside, if COVID hadn't come in and, and the Chinese virus and, and the Democrats and Obama and, you know, God and everybody else uh, who caused this, yeah, we'd, we'd be having a roaring economy and, you know, uh, black unemployment's the lowest it's been in a while and blah, blah, blah. That will be a message that's out there. However, if you just take a look at the nightly news, the country is in, 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 such turmoil. Uh, it's stoked by the president who's going to, uh, who is specifically asked not to come to cities because he's so inflammatory. Uh, the economy is not healthy. It's, it's, it's collapsing around us in so many important Well, in ways. Donald Trump's world that the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P is the economy. If you talk to Donald Trump, and it's better than ever. In fact, it's, it's reached even the late February 2020 um, highs. Well, on, if you, on, if and if you have that $100 million house in LA, while you've got 20,000 homeless people surrounding you on the streets, and that's the kind of America you want to live in, that's the kind of America you want to live in. But for the rest of us, we can look around and we can say, you know what? Actually, things aren't better. I don't talk to my friends and my neighbors anymore because I'm feeling disconnected from them. In reality, we probably still share a huge majority of our values, but one person and an, and an ideology. And I, I just wonder when Donald Trump is gone, although Trumpism will last beyond him, I wonder if when he finally goes, if people will wake up and then say, you know what, I, 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 was, I liked him, I didn't really like his message. Um, because what is the message? Just chaos and dissension and violence? That's not a message that is resonating with, with most Americans, but he has somehow captured their hearts and minds. And so if he is hopefully, you know, God willing, not reelected, and it's, it's very clear to America that that has happened, we need to capture the hearts and minds back of Americans. And we say need to hand out an olive branch, every, each and every one of us. Because Absolutely. I recall the 2000 election between uh, Al Gore and, and George Bush Jr. And uh, there was some really hard feelings for at least 12 months after that election. It really, in fact, for some, it never was, um, that was never healed, that election. And I think this is going to be far worse. No matter who wins, uh, there are going to be some really... Um, polarization of Americans. And I think no matter who wins, uh, one side to the other needs to hold out on Olive Branch and say, you know, ultimately we're Americans. Well, I I feel a lot of people say that, Tim, but you know, it's hard to get everybody to do that. Everybody's in a silo. I want to go back to the question you posed, and that is whether it's a good idea for Biden to actually engage in a, in a debate. You know? And I keep thinking of uh, how Trump got behind Hillary Clinton. Do you remember that in the Clinton-Trump debates? He got behind her. 
Well, he walked. I mean, he stalked. He stalked her on stage. He stalked well, her on stage. Said that. And that, and that was an, obviously a dirty move. Okay, and yeah. there will be much dirtier moves like that beyond that. The other thing, the idea about having a running title of, uh, you know, is he telling the truth? Having the fact checkers. A lot of these lies are they're more complicated than he's telling the truth. He's not telling the truth. He's mischaracterizing. You know, I mean, you go to court, you find certain lawyers do that all the time. And judges get fooled by it. And so, I mean, the public will be fooled. The, the fact checker won't be able to move fast enough. Won't be able Well, you to know what? Maybe Joe contact. Biden says, I don't buy it, Donald Trump. I don't buy it. And let's let the fact checkers come out tomorrow and prove you to be lying as I think you are right now. Yeah, but I want to go back to the whether he should have yeah. this debate at all. Okay. And my answer is no, he shouldn't. Um, he can make a much better impression if he if he does what he did on Monday and he can talk to us fireside chat. He can connect with us. He can ask us to understand him as a human being. He can comment on the crazy things that Trump says. Why does he have to engage with? A OK, guy well, let me let me ask you this. Jay. Politics. Let me let me ask you this, Jay. Then how does Don, uh, how does Joe Biden respond to the ultimate criticism that's going to occur saying, see, Joe Biden isn't up to it mentally. He can't take on Donald Trump because he's feeble. And he knows that if he's not on a script, that he will fall apart if there is a, you know, a, a live debate in front of all of Americans. And so that is going to be lobbied against Joe Biden. And I will guarantee you it will land some blows and will take away votes. Let me, let me However, can I just say, say he's you know, proven you know, himself I, I so really many times. Hold on, one at a time. Go ahead, Jay. Then I'll get to you, Stephanie. I really have a lot Thanks. of experience. I, Joe Biden, have a lot of experience in, in dealing with pathological people. And, and I don't want to deal with him. You can just listen to me. You can listen to him. You can get the flavor of who we are. I mean, I, I don't want to have the dirty tricks. I don't want to have to engage with him and, and listen to his ad hominem attacks. That's what he does. That's what he's going to do. Why should you listen to that? That's not the way you should select the president. Let me tell you my platform. And incidentally, he doesn't have a platform. Uh, I mean, you know, there's so many things that he could do. Now, I agree that some people may love to see a good fight. Um, but on the other hand, it's, a lot of people would respond to that. I would personally respond to that. I don't want to see them, you know, get bloody on the stage. It doesn't mean anything to me. That's not the way you select the president. And, and Trump is going to do that. Okay, thank you, Jay. Stephanie, go ahead. Thanks. Sorry for overlapping. I actually didn't hear Jay. Anyway, um, you know, he has uh, Biden has taken on many of these challenges, and and the most maybe the most recent of this of this ilk is the is Sarah Palin. I mean, he has no problem. This is an educated man. He is perfectly capable, and that that issue is not the important one for me. I'd like to submit that. So, uh, and respect Nancy Pelosi, who has come up with just the best ways of handling this man, which is not invite him to use the House of Representatives for his State of the Union speech, okay? That got his attention, okay? And now she's suggesting Joe Biden does not need to, it's not in the Constitution. This is another norm. So this is one that Joe Biden can break. And I, I understand uh, your, your well-established concern, Tim, but I think it's much less of a concern compared to the advantage that Joe Biden would have by taking control of this and getting his message out uh, more, uh, you know, more vociferously than he is for the points that he needs to make and the platform that he needs to share. So okay. I'm, I'm thinking- so Here's a question to you. When's the last time a president was elected without a debate? Um, well, we're talking Lincoln Douglas. Okay. So maybe before that, but yeah. I don't know the history before that. You need the, we need the historian on. Winston, Winston, you're going to be our historian. When's the last time a president was elected without a debate between the two candidates? Well, I, I mean, it, these debates are happening whether we want them to or not. So that's, there you go. Okay. There's the answer right there. Uh, and you know, we've got, I, I Chris Wallace is not, um, He's a reasonable person. He's willing to call um, Donald Trump out, and he will for Joe Biden too, and, and ask him hard and fair questions. Um, you know, they were determined. He's he's from Fox News, so uh, the Fox News people feel they'll have someone in their corner. Uh, the other uh, three, I thought, were also. I don't know about the the one fellow, Steve. Um, uh, I can't remember his last name, but in any event, hopefully they will moderate this well. But you remember back when uh, Reagan 
what this, I, it must, I don't know if it was against Carter, but uh, when he said, there you go again, or something like yeah. that. That's yeah. what Joe Biden needs to do when, when Donald Trump is having a tantrum is he just can look at it like, can you see here, folks, the compare and contrast, which would you rather have in the White House, an adult who is going to respond to your needs, who's not taking away your guns, who's going to let you go to church, just wear a mask, socially space, whatever, but the country's going to go back to normal. Or do you want four more worse, much, much worse years of chaos and destruction to the point where you don't even recognize your nation in four years? Uh, I think that would, this is all that, that, that he has to do. They are both senior citizens. They both have, um, you know, I, I mean, if, if, if if Biden wants to say something, he said, why did you deny your strokes when that wasn't an issue before? Or, uh, I mean, he, he shouldn't go to that level. He should just okay. no, not I, answer I, the question. I get you. Well, I want to go back to uh, Donald Trump. The, the, the focus of the show is Donald Trump's attempt to, um, you know, fan, fan the flames of violence and, and pin it on Joe Biden. Um, did you happen to watch Laurel Ingram uh, interview Donald Trump, particularly about the part where... Um, you know, Joe Biden is being advised by, um, quote unquote, people in the dark shadows, uh, almost a QAnon, QAnon conspiracy kind of air to it. And, and to Laura Ingram's credit, I mean, she kind of said, what <laughs> can you what do you mean dark shadows? I mean, he, he made all sorts of crazy references in that interview. And that was one of them. And the other one, which I thought was rather um, shocking, was comparing the policeman that shot uh, Jake, um, Jacob Blake in the back seven times comparing that to someone who was having a bad day on the golf field, on the golf course and choking at a three foot putt, putt. And, you know, again, the things that Donald Trump says is so obtuse to the situation of which he's commenting upon. Um, I'm just wondering again, for the 42 to 44%, I'm sure they're just thinking that's a great thing for him to say, but uh, I got to ask, you know, I wish I could get a, the 11% in a room and a focus group and say, how does that strike you? How does that impact if you're thinking about voting for Donald Trump? And does it make a difference that he says these outlandish, crazy things? Don't, I don't, forget, know, you don't forget his thing about the airplane full of people in, in dark suits who look like... Yes, they're, they're flying in uh, Antifa uh, in, in, in black shirts and pants. And they're flying them in on airlines, which he got again from guess where? Fox News. So. <laughs> it was originally some weird Facebook post of somebody, you know, that, it's, it's just crazy, Tim. But when somebody says, well, you know, it's, it's, it's about the, well, I can't tell, but you know, then that invites people's own minds to put in whatever theory they want to put in there rather than just a simple fact. So, um, you know, the more interviews he does like that, the more we see, the more it exposes. I think the better it is for him to have even Fox interviews. They, they are revealing what's there and what's not there. Yeah. Well, as usual, our, we're running out of time. This, this 28 minutes just isn't enough time to, to handle the topic of Donald Trump. Um, Winston, your prediction for the week to come. Oh, it's, it's just like, a, 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 you know, Captain Kirk sitting down and saying disaster report you know, and, and, and just <laughs> holding on as what happened. Okay. All right. We'll look for Captain Kirk in his big swivel chair. Uh, Jay Fidel, please, your, your prediction for the week to come. Oh, there'll be uh, there'll be attacks on Biden for sure, but there'll also be very bizarre things that he does with government, uh, things he has no authority to do. We we saw that this week, and everybody says, "Oh my God, he can't do that," and yet he does it. And the more he does that, the more he distracts us from the fact that we have COVID and a failing economy. All right, thank you, Jay. Stephanie, your last thoughts. Uh, thanks. Um, I just wanted to share my side of of it that. There's no waking up, okay? So hopefully of the 11%, there are those that are open-minded and, and looking to logic and values and our norms as Americans. But there's, for those who are empowered by this administration, they are not gonna wake up. It's just like when you're divorced and you're looking at you know this other person, they're not gonna wake up after the divorce or whatever they're they're in their place well they wake up once someone writes a check 
<laughs> they're so they wake up real faith, quick. <laughs> they're not waking up as far as the convictions and the and the values that you know you're you're wanting to um to to bestow uh, for everybody to have access to it. It's I'm so that's one place where I I'm trying to organize myself, pre- prepare myself to deal with my fellow Americans who are of this ilk and who are empowered right now and please might be empowered again and please hopefully not but you know okay. we're all in this boat all righty okay uh, yes yeah, stephanie thank you we're we've run out of time and i wish to say thank you stephanie thank you jay thank you winston for coming on trump week i'll see you next week i'm tim apicella the host see us next week 11 o'clock wednesday trump week aloha <laughs>